One of the most popular drivers in the truck series and one of the newest stars in NASCAR joins the show today, Natalie Decker on Out of the Groove. How's it going y'all? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove, special edition of the show. Earlier today I had the great pleasure to speak with Natalie Decker, driver for Nice Motorsports in the NASCAR Gander Truck Series. Got to talk to her about a lot of things including her great top 5 finish at Daytona at the beginning of this year. I also asked her what drivers do during this lengthy hiatus and a whole lot more. So without further ado, let's go now to my interview with Natalie Decker. Hope you guys enjoy. How's it going, y'all? Eric here. Uh, this week, I am joined by NASCAR Truck Series driver Natalie Decker. How's it going, Natalie? Thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. It's going good. This year, uh, this year started off great for you as well. It's a shame that we've kind of hit this long hiatus because you got your first Truck Series Top 5 at Daytona. Talk us through that weekend. You're up there during that dramatic finish. I still can't believe that I finished fifth at Daytona. Coming from... Last year, when I was on fire, lap one, to then this year, finishing fifth, it was just so amazing, and it was so cool that, like, my whole family was there, and my sponsor was there, and it was his birthday weekend, so it was really fun. you got to make those sponsors happy, for sure. Uh, does it feel any more special that it came at Daytona, your best career finish to date? Definitely. And the super speedways have been my favorite since I got into racing um, in the NASCAR series, just because they were so different. And I came from short track racing. So the first time I ever was on a super speedway, I was at Talladega and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I loved it. So to be able to have one of my best finishes at Daytona um, means a lot. For sure. Uh, so this year, you're in a part-time deal, uh, but with a new team, a new manufacturer. Uh, how did the deal with Nice Motorsports come together this past off season? It came together pretty quickly, and it it was just so amazing how it came together. We didn't have the funding to do a full season, and with just how their um, team was going to handle all their other drivers and what seats were filled, it worked perfectly for me coming in and doing the races I wanted to do and my sponsor wanted to do. But now that all of this is on hold, who knows, maybe I can find some more sponsors and we can do more than just 10 races. That's about what we're signed up for right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I want uh, people who are watching my videos who maybe don't know as much about how you got started in racing. You're still one of the newer stars in the sport. Uh, so I want to ask you, I know you got started racing, I believe, go-karts, right, at a young age. What initially drew you to initial, uh, to getting interested in NASCAR? When I was really young, um, my dad was always a fan of NASCAR, and he always had it on TV, so I would watch it with him all the time. But my dad owned a snowmobile racetrack, and that's what really got my love for motorsports was I was always at his racetrack helping him out, hanging out with all these snowmobile racers, and, and that's what made me just fall in love with it. And I've always done it with a family and as a family. And so we went go-karting when we started that, it was myself, my brother, and my two cousins, and my aunt and uncle, and we traveled all over and raced go-karts together as kind of almost a hobby at that point. We were just doing it for fun, spending family time together. Everyone loved racing. And then it just kept slowly getting more serious and more serious. And uh, I think I was about probably seven years old when I told my dad, I was like, I want to race in NASCAR. And he was like, you don't want to get into racing, Natalie. Don't do it. <laughs> Because he knew, since he did it growing up, he knew how addicting it was. And But I'm so glad I got into it. And um, all those years go-karting, they really made me fall in love with racing so much because I got to do it with my family, and it just made it that much more special. Did you have any role models or drivers within NASCAR specifically that you looked up to early in your career? Yeah, well, I really looked up to my dad because I knew – what he did in his past and he owned a snowmobile racetrack he raced dirt he gave me this cool story when we were watching the cup race the other one day that he wanted to get into asphalt racing so he heard this guy mark martin had a car for sale drove down um, to a shop and bought it and went asphalt racing for his first time and then it was so cool seeing mark martin race on tv so that made me really look up to to mark martin because i felt like my dad knew him and it was just really cool to hear that story as a young kid um, and then as I got older and really more into it I started 
following Danica Patrick a lot. And then uh, when I was racing short tracks, moving up into super lates, Chase Elliott was in super lates. And I really looked up to him when he was racing supers. And then now I really look up in the NASCAR series, I really look up to Mar um, Martin Truex. But I like get a lot of my inspiration from Supercross riders. This year, I've been like really into Supercross, mm -hmm. and I got to go to an event at Daytona, and I met Aaron Plessinger, and he's like my favorite Supercross rider, and it was so cool, and they really inspire me. So that's where I'm getting my inspiration from this year. <laughs> Definitely. So that's a wide variety, definitely. But a lot of good names to pick from, I think. A lot of different driving styles, a lot of different backgrounds for sure. So one of the trendiest things right now is iRacing. So I want to ask you, are you a big iRacing person? Do you? How often do you use it? We have two sims at our house right now. I have my sim. And I'm always under, if Derek Lemke, my boyfriend, if he's ever on, it's either him or me. Um, but then Travis Braden, I raced the Arca Series with him. Um, he has his sim here, so him and his girlfriend come over, like, and we all, like, I race together, and it's really fun, um, but I don't, I'm not under Natalie Decker on there, so no one ever knows if I'm on. <laughs> That's good, Natalie, if you cause the big wreck, you don't want people to know it's you, other drivers will get in trouble for that, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. So what, have you paid any attention to the, the Pro Invitational or any of the big iRacing series that's, like, on Fox and stuff, which, do you have any interest in attempting to qualify for one of those at some point? Um, I haven't really thought about doing that and qualifying for it, um, but I have been really interested in it and watching it, and I think it's really cool that um, our racing series has a sim like this that we're able to go and show our races like on TV right now at this time because nothing, you know, no sports are happening yeah. right now. So I think that's really cool that our sport is able to do that. Definitely. So uh, speaking of that, because – we're in the middle of this hiatus for who knows how long. Hopefully not too long, but no way to really know. Uh, how are drivers spending this hiatus? Like, what do NASCAR drivers do to stay active during this time? I, we're so used to traveling and being gone every weekend, so it's really hard to actually be home this long. But, you know, I just hope everybody's staying safe. And my parents were here in North Carolina with me, and they went home right before, like, everything was getting locked down. Um, but I made a TikTok. I've been trying to stay busy, but it's really hard. So speaking of TikTok, you said you started a TikTok. I know you have a huge online presence. How important is social media to establishing your brand, as, especially as a young driver in the sport? It's so important. And that's It's free advertisement, and it's just a really easy way to communicate and connect with your fans. Mm -hmm. And back then, you weren't able to do that. Um, and now I think it's just so important to be able to do that and stay active and being able to push out important messages or just inspiring other people. It's a really easy way to just connect with everyone. Definitely. I've been following your, your YouTube channel lately. I know recently you've gotten a little bit more involved in like daily vlogging style content. How's YouTube life been yes. treating you so far? I really enjoy it. Um, I'm actually going to do another video today, hopefully. But it's really fun, and it's an easy way for me to just show more of my life. Because Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, you only see a short video or a picture, and it really doesn't show as much as it can show like you can on YouTube. And I just think that's so important because people can only see so much um, through a picture or a short little minute clip. And I, I want to let everyone in as much as I can and show them exactly you know, what it's like living this lifestyle and being, you know, an athlete and all this stuff and how important certain things are in your life. Definitely. One of my favorite things watching those is, is your dog always running around, always all over the place. I saw on a, a NASCAR pole position, you're on the cover this weekend, uh, there's a feature story all about you and, and your love for animals and all your pets. So how important are they to your uh, kind of staying sane during this whole quarantine deal? Yes, and that is so, I feel so blessed to be able to be on that cover with my dog. I think that's so cool. And I got him last year at the end of the race season. And I was really nervous to get a dog because I was like, my lifestyle is so crazy. I'm traveling all the time. I don't know what I'm going to do when I can't be home with the dog. But my dogs really made it easier for me and more of a schedule and and I absolutely love it. He comes to all the races, and he has so much fun. My mom brings, my mom and dad bring their dogs, 
and it's just a great time, and I'm so happy I got home. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to join us today, Natalie. Uh, best of luck with the rest of the season whenever it hopefully eventually starts happening. But thanks for being on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So there you have it. Again, a big thank you to Natalie Decker uh, for being on the show. Really awesome to get to hear from her. And a big thank you to all of you who watched. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe to Natalie Decker's new YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Also follow her on Twitter, Instagram. She's big on social media. You're probably, many of you probably already following her, but definitely go check her out. That's all I've got for today's episode. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram while you're at it, and subscribe here if you are new. We talk about NASCAR every week, throughout the week, even during this hiatus. The grind does not stop. Of course, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I could not do this show without the support I get from each and every single one of you amazing folks on Patreon. So if you also want to help support the channel during this hiatus, uh, check out that top link down in the description. I do greatly appreciate it, y'all. I know there's been some news today, but I'm going to save all of that for tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow's going to be a big, bulky out of the group episode that's going over all the latest news and trends around NASCAR. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. Uh, got other videos in the works. See if we can get some other people on the show at some time, uh, some point sometime soon. Uh, but again, a big thank you to Natalie Decker for being on. Hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I certainly did. See you guys again very, very soon. Stay safe out there, everyone.